Welcome to lecture six in the accounting lecture series. In this lecture, we will develop a balance sheet for week four and introduce the cash flow statement. This lecture is based on the book, The Accounting Game, written by Daryl Mulis and Judith Orloff. Here is the ending balance sheet of week three. Since we are at the start of week four, we'll turn this into a beginning balance sheet for week four by rolling up our earnings week to date of $8 and adding them to our retained earnings of $20. Our beginning balance sheet for week four shows retained earnings of $28. One of your friends got her allowance and is ready to pay you $5 for a lemonade she bought on account several weeks ago. How should the balance sheet be adjusted to reflect that your friend wants to pay you $5 in cash for a lemonade she bought on account several weeks ago. You can pause the lecture video and think about the changes you should make to the balance sheet. To reflect this change, we added $5 in cash and reduced accounts receivable by $5. Total asset remains the same at $82. Do you think that this transaction would show up on this week's income statement? You can pause the lecture video to think about what your answer should be. We are using the accrual accounting method. So we accounted for this transaction as a sale two weeks ago when you gave the lemonade to your friend. Maybe what we are missing is a way to also keep track of our cash. This is the cash flow statement. It is divided into three sections, operating cash flow, investing cash flow, and financing cash flow. What do we know about our cash situation at the start of week four? Based on the beginning balance sheet of week four, we can decide that the beginning cash at the start of the week was $59. We also received $5 in cash from collecting accounts receivable. You are taking your lemonade business rather serious, so you buy a more professional looking lemonade stand for $8. You also buy a tiny patch of land from a friend's family for $2. You expect the stand will last 10 years without major repairs. Would you call this an asset? Yes, it is an asset. What do we call this type of asset? We call it a fixed asset. What would you change on the balance sheet? We have purchased a stand for $8 and land for $2 using cash. Please pause the lecture video and try to figure out what changes should be made to the balance sheet. We used cash. So our cash should go down by $10. We also need to create a new category under assets for our fixed assets. Here you can see that cash has been reduced from $64 to $54 and that we have created a new category for our fixed assets in the assets column of the balance sheet. Would the purchase of the land or the stand show up in the income statement? No, it wouldn't. Why can't it be expensed? Because it is a major purchase of significant value with a long life. It would not give an accurate picture of your business's profitability if we expensed the entire purchase this year, since we will be using this fixed asset for about 10 years. You decide your stand could use some color. You look around and are able to buy a couple of cans of paint for $2 in cash. You expect that the paint is not very high in quality and your stand will need to be repainted next year. This is considered a maintenance expense, so we are able to expense it. What changes should we make to the balance sheet after we spend $2 in cash to buy low quality paint? You can pause the lecture video to try to adjust the balance sheet yourself. We use $2 of cash, so cash goes down to $52 from $54. We also talked about how the paint is considered a maintenance expense. What is affected by expenses? Our earnings. Since we haven't sold anything yet this week, our earnings are now negative too. Let's also see how the purchase of the stand, land and paint affect our cash flow statement. Please pause the lecture video to try to adjust the cash flow statement yourself. The paint is considered a maintenance expense, so it belongs under operating cash flow more specifically in the SGNA category. SGNA stands for Selling, General and Administrative. 
sgna are the expenses incurred to promote, sell and deliver a company's products and services and to manage the overall company the land and stand are considered major purchases with a long life so they would be placed under investing cash flow having a lemonade stand would be much more relaxing if you had a sink so you could wash and reuse glasses on the spot you are able to find a place where they sell a second-hand sink for two dollars and they allow you to buy the sink on account what changes do we need to make to the balance sheet to reflect the two dollar non-cash sink purchase you can pause the lecture video and try to answer this yourself our fixed assets value has increased from ten dollars to twelve dollars since we were allowed to purchase the sink on credit accounts payable also increased from $24 to $26. While you were trying to put the sink in your stand, you cracked a roof shingle. It costs you $1 for the repair, which can be charged to your account. What changes do we need to make to the balance sheet to reflect the $1 roof shingle repair, which was charged to your account? You can pause the lecture video and try to answer this yourself. The expense of $1 was charged to your account with the handyman business, so accounts payable goes up from $26 to $27. What else is affected when we incur expenses? Our earnings. Our earnings are further reduced from negative 2 to negative 3. Better start to sell some lemonade soon. It is important to understand when items are capitalized. This means that rather than expensing the item's purchase price, like the $2 paint, we depreciate the cost of the good over the years we assume we'll be able to use it. Which of the following answers do you think is correct? Please pause the slide if you would like to think about this question. The item we would capitalize is the $10 computer. Why would we capitalize a $10 computer if we were to purchase it for our lemonade business? When companies decide about when to expense an item, versus when to capitalize it, they have a few guiding rules. The first one is time. You would only capitalize items that last for more than a year. The second one is cost. Items that are likely to last beyond one year, like a trash can, but that are too insignificant qua cost, would be expensed and not capitalized. Most companies have a set dollar amount below which they will not capitalize. Oh no, it's time to open business, but you have been so busy that you forgot to make lemonade. You do not think this is a good idea, but you decide to purchase pre-made lemonade for $20 in cash. It contains 100 glasses. What do we need to change to our balance sheet in order to reflect your $20 purchase of pre-made lemonade? You can pause the lecture video to try to figure this out yourself. Since we used cash to buy the lemonade, our cash will go down with $20. Our finished goods inventory should go up by $20. Here we can see that cash went down from $52 to $32 and that finished goods inventory went up from zero to $20. Let's also see how our latest transactions impact our cash flow statement. You purchased a sink for $2, which was charged to your account. You had a roof shingle repair, which cost you $1, which was charged to your account. You also paid for the $20 in pre-made lemonade using your cash. You can pause the video lecture here and try to figure out how the transactions mentioned on the right affect the cash flow statement. The purchase of the sink was charged to your account, so there was no cash involved, and therefore this transaction does not show up in the cash flow statement until the day that you settle this account by paying cash. The roof shingle repair was also not paid for with cash, so it too would not show up on the cash flow statement right now. You did pay with cash for the $20 of pre-made lemonade, so we should add that under inventory paid. We added minus $20 for the cash we put on the table to pay for the pre-made lemonade. Your business did great. You sold everything. 100 glasses at 50 cents per glass. You received $40 in cash and $10 was purchased on account. How do your sales affect the balance sheet? Please pause the lecture video if you wish to try to answer this yourself first. 
We should add $40 to cash and $10 to accounts receivable. We should also bring our finished goods down to zero. Since we sold lemonade for $50, but the cost of goods sold was only $20, we also need to add $30 to our earnings week to date. Here you can see that cash was changed from 32 to 72 and that accounts receivable was increased from six to $16. Finished goods was reduced to zero and we added $30 to our earnings week to date, which was minus three, which brings earnings week to date to 27. How do our sales affect the cash flow statement? Please pause the lecture video to answer yourself first. The only cash transaction involved the $40 you received in cash, so we need to add that to our collections. Here you can see that we added $40 in sales to collections. Since you made such a healthy profit, you decide to go to the grocery store and pay off your account. What needs to be changed on the balance sheet when you pay the grocer the $4 you owed him? You can pause the video lecture if you wish to answer this first. If we need to pay the grocer, we need to take $4 out of our cash to give to him. We can also reduce our accounts payable by $4. You can see here that cash went down from 72 to 68 and accounts payable was reduced from 27 to 23. What should we change on the cash flow statement? We used cash to pay the grocer, so we added minus four accounts payable to inventory paid. You also decide to pay the remaining $25 of the bank loan. The banker wants you to pay $2 in interest again. You decide to move ahead. How do we need to update our balance sheet? Please pause the lecture video if you want to answer first. We have to repay the $25 loan and the $2 interest using our cash. So cash will go down by $27. We also should reduce notes payable from 25 to zero. And finally, we should reduce our earnings week to date by $2 since the interest is an expense of being in business. Cash went down from 68 to $41. Notes payable was reduced from $25 to $0, and our earnings week to date was adjusted from $27 to $25. How does the repayment of the loan and the interest affect our cash flow statement? Please pause the lecture video if you wish to answer yourself. Both were paid for with cash, so both should show up. We add the loan payback under financing cash flow, and we add the interest paid under operating cash flow. You can see the updated cash flow statement here with minus $2 under interest paid and minus $25 under borrow payback. Do you think that depreciation is the decrease in value of fixed assets over time due to wear and tear and obsolescence? Yes, this is a good definition for depreciation. Which of the following can we depreciate? Please pause the lecture video if you want to think about this. The only item on this list that we can depreciate is our $10 stand. We purchased our original stand for $8 and added a $2 sink to it. You own $12 in fixed assets, which includes $2 worth of land. By law, you cannot depreciate land because it does not wear out. We will use straight line depreciation over 10 years, depreciating our fixed assets with $1 per year. We decided we will depreciate our stand over 10 years at $1 per year. How will this affect the balance sheet? Please pause the lecture video if you wish to try to answer this. First, we will have to decrease the value of our fixed asset from $12 to $11. Depreciation is accounting's way of expensing fixed assets, so therefore depreciation affects earnings. We decrease the value of our fixed asset and the value of earnings week to date by $1 each. What is this number here called? It is called book value. The book value of our fixed assets is simply the purchase price minus accumulated depreciation. How does depreciation affect the cash flow statement? Please pause the lecture video if you want to answer this for yourself first. Depreciation is not a cash expense so it does not affect the cash flow statement. We can now finish up our cash flow statement for week four. 
we can see that our net change in cash for the week was minus eighteen dollars this brings our ending cash to forty one dollars this is the same value as cash under assets on our most recent balance sheet here is a list of everything that has happened in week four based on this information you can try to put together a new income statement for week four on the next slide i have the empty income statement template and on the slide after that I provide you with the completed income statement for week four. Here is the empty income statement template. And here is the completed income statement for week four.